What is going on guys? Grave here. Welcome back to Star Wars Battlefront 2. Today I want to do an assault class guide because I know there's a lot of people coming back to the game, a lot of new players starting to play the game. So we'll kind of give you some ideas of things that I use. First of all, we're going to talk about star card. Now the three star cards that I use are just personal preference. If you like something else, that's definitely okay to use. I will show you the three I use and then some other ones along the way. The first thing I like to use is survivalist. Now survivalist will give you a faster health regen which is good with the assault class because you only have a hundred and fifty max health to begin with. The next thing I like to use is bounty hunter. This will be a, a increase in the way that you gain battle points. You will get those battle points quicker. So bounty hunter is always good to use on any class, but especially assault because support and like you know the heavy class and and the officer have a better way of getting points towards you know gaining other things. So. Bounty Hunter is good for the Assault class, in my opinion, so you can get to those heroes quickly. And last but not least, I like Toughen Up, which will replace your Scan Dart with a heal. It's pretty much like a bandage. You'll be able to heal yourself. And like any other game you've ever played, especially like Battlefield, you can heal yourself very often with that Toughen Up. Like I said, it will replace the Scan Dart. Now, you can drop Bounty Hunter and use Assault Training, as the card I just showed you a few seconds ago. That will give you a small amount of health per kill. So, Assault Training... Uh, survivalist and toughen up together is a very kind of almost more tanky survivability style class that works very well also if you're looking for something to stay alive a little more often bodyguard is also good if you're objective style player you take less explosive and less toxin damage of course improved scan dart will kind of just be a team play style thing you know anytime you can throw something out there where your teammates can see the enemy is always good acid launcher in my opinion is really good for like small corridors it's a good one to swap to if you're in a small a kind of confined area that way you can kind of keep the enemy backed up it may not kill them but they will not be able to come through it of course resourceful is always good and the improved uh, thermal detonator some people like brawler but these are just kind of ideas of what you can use like i said the three i like survivalist bounty hunter toughen up and sometimes throw assault training in there instead of bounty hunter those are all really good cards but just kind of pick what you like to use and what works well for you and your play style but those three if you're looking for something are what I really prefer to use if you want to try those out. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about with this class is going to be weapons. Now, when it comes to weapons, all of the factions, no matter what faction you choose, the very first weapon is going to have the same stats. Even though it may not have the same name, but it's going to have the same stats. This is kind of the base weapon in the game. You cannot put any attachments or anything like that on it. But it's an overall fairly decent weapon. Pretty good, just kind of down the board. You know what I mean? It's decent fire rate decent range decent damage decent cooling power nothing extraordinary but a very good gun and there's some people that still use the base weapon to this day that have played for a long time because they prefer it because it's fairly easy to use and like i said it's got decent stats across the board but the first weapon that you will unlock for the assault class will be the a280 which was the next one in the list it is a burst style weapon decent at close range not great better at medium range and with the right attachments pretty decent at long range now some of the attachments you can get are some of the things to uh, kind of slow down the cooling so it does not overheat as fast you can increase the range and also increase the visibility with a dual zoom this is a good gun to me to use in those kind of medium outdoor fights if you're not a fan of the last weapon on the list the el this is a pretty good overall gun like i said just be careful in really close quarters because Sometimes you'll win those fights, sometimes you won't. But the A280, in my opinion, is a very decent gun because of its overall stats. Or kind of like the first weapon we talked about is pretty decent at everything. Not great at anything, but it is kind of one of those jack-of-all-trades weapons, in my opinion. Now, my personal favorite weapon is the CR2, which is pretty much a submachine gun. Great at close range. Decent at close medium range, but long medium range and long distance, it is garbage. But it does have some decent attachments. The stock ability kind of adds that lessened spread. Now the iron shot I'm not a big fan of. And the infrared scope I'm not a big fan of. So that's the only thing I usually run on is the stock for the improved kind of, like I said, in spreads. So you don't have to worry about it over uh, or not hitting your shots as much. Or, you know, kind of being off with some of the bullets. The thing with this weapon is it will overheat quickly because it does shoot very quickly. It does not have a lot of range and not a lot of damage, but the CR2 is my favorite just because I play very aggressive. Now, the EL16HFE is the long-range weapon. If you like to play long-range, this is the gun to do it with because it does have some attachments 
that will improve that range and improve the kind of recoil. This is a very good gun for those very big maps that you're only trying to pick people off across the map, maybe get rid of some pesky snipers. I like the EL only in certain situations, but some people out there may like a slower single shot style weapon. It has very good stats overall as well. It will overheat a little quickly, so just keep that in mind. Like I said, guys, overall, my personal preference, the A280 and the CR2 for this assault class. My personal favorite cards, like I told you, Survivalist, Bounty Hunter, Toughen Up, but there were some other good cards you can throw in there as well. And some other tips to kind of go along with this assault class is you kind of have to play aggressive, especially, like I said, if you're using the CR2 like I am here in this video. But the assault class only has that 150 health, so always keep that in mind. You can get kind of destroyed quickly if, if multiple people are shooting at you. That's one reason that I like Survivalist, that I like that toughen up so I can heal myself on the go and continue to play aggressive and not have to wait on slower health regen. But the assault class, in my opinion, is one of my favorites. I mean, I like all the classes in game, but this is just kind of in your face, just soldier on soldier kind of fighting. That's what I've always liked, uh, the assault class within Star Wars Battlefront 2. It is a good class to use to start out to kind of get used to the game, in my opinion, because the other two classes or three classes have some different things going on with them. This is more of a basic kind of learning class. But then once you have learned it, you can definitely master it and become a very good assault player. And some people like to use just the, the classes instead of heroes. So if you can become very good with some of these classes, you can do better than the people that are using the heroes, in my opinion. But just play aggressive with the assault class and kind of learn the ins and outs of each weapon and find the star cards that work for you. And you can have very good success with this class overall. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Of course, if you liked it, hit the like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And I'll catch you next time. Peace.